I want to share this morning about releasing the God factor in you. How many people want the God factor released in your life? Come on, give me a wave if you really want the God. Come on, let's ask God. Father, would you release the God factor in me? Father, would you help me? Would you, would you help me to, to break open that, Lord, I'd be able to release what you've put in me, the, the words and the anointing and, the, and the, the, look, there's people here that have got compassion and, and thinking and, and thoughts and, and there's stuff going on on the inside of you, but you, we don't push through to, and, and, and make it happen. Lord, that we would make that happen in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. In Acts 10, verse 38, the Word of God says this. It says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. And here we find Jesus of Nazareth, the one that we come to worship and serve today, that God anointed him with the mighty Holy Spirit. Friend, if there's ever a day that we need a release of the mighty Holy Spirit power in our lives, it has to be today. I, I don't know how you think, but that's how I think. Jesus himself realized his power came from his Father. Friend, I cannot rely on natural ability to overcome or triumph anything that comes against me. I've got to understand that there's a greater source of power that God has made available to you and me that we can draw upon, that we can claim, that we can grab hold of and bring it down into the realm of the natural man and destroy every work that Satan has planned for us. We've got, and Jesus realized that. Jesus understood that. Jesus of Nazareth was filled with the Holy Spirit and with power who went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. Friend, I want to tell you, if God be for you, who can be against you? I believe that God is with us. Do you believe that today? God is with His church. But you see, God can only do what we allow Him to do. Sure, He will move supernaturally. Sure, He will do things like that. But I want to tell you, God doesn't want us lagging 10 miles behind Him. He wants us shoulder to shoulder. Amen. He wants us walking with Him, walking in faith, believing in Him, believing and trusting in Him. And then He will encourage us. He is the captain of the host. He is the head of the church. He, but friend, the church is lagging so far behind and I believe that God's plan is to bring us up, amen, to draw us close to Him. Jesus Himself re realized this. In Acts chapter 4, uh, verse 1, it says, Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. This same Christ who you and I worship and you and I praise and, and we know that He is our Lord and Savior. He is, as Kendall was sharing today, he, he triumphed over Satan. He took us out of the kingdom of darkness and brought us into a brand new kingdom, the kingdom of His dear Son, amen. We, have, we are, as Kendall said, we, our position today is in Him. Jesus, God, how God, uh, He was filled with the Holy Spirit. What an amazing statement. In, in verse 23, it says here in Luke 23, uh, 3, 23, how Jesus himself it says, began his ministry at about the age of 30. Here we find Jesus had lived on this planet for 30 years. He would have had compassion. He would have seen the atrocities. He would have seen things. But there was something happened to him as he was walking down that road one day when John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And as this John, as John saw this man, the Bible says that he came to John and said, John, baptize me. John says, You should be baptizing me. He said, No baptize me. And as Jesus went into the water and came out of the water, it says that there was a form that descended upon him like a dove and he was filled with the Holy Spirit power. Friend, you and I need to be filled again and again and again and again and again with the mighty Holy Spirit power. There's no way of escape. There's no other way. You can't just have it as a one-time experience. I believe that God wants us to have a many times experience. Do you believe that? I believe that God wants us to release the God factor in our life. Jesus is always a son of God. 
He would always have had the compassion on the sick, etc. But he didn't do anything until he was endured from, with power from on high. In Acts 4, 18, Jesus spoke these words, and I want to read them to you. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. You see, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because. Friend, I want to tell you today, the Spirit of God is upon you because. It just doesn't end there that you just talk in tongues and have a little bit of a babble. No, the Spirit of God is upon you because. Because. Because God has anointed you for a purpose and for a plan. We are a part of a body and God wants to bring this body together, the church. Today, the church is so fragmented that God has got a purpose and a plan is to draw the body of Christ again together, that we'll stand shoulder to shoulder, that we will triumph over every onslaught of the devil. God will, as, G, as Kendall said, the devil will find no place in us. But I want to tell you, if you're full of fear and full of frustration, he will find a place to hang his hat. If he could have found something in Jesus, he would have hung his hat on him. He would have taken him down the gurgler. He would have said, look, boy, just bow down and worship me and I'll give you everything. If he would have said, that's a good idea, devil would have won. But Jesus said he found no place in me. Amen. How many people would love to be able to just stand there and say that? Fear has got to go. All those sort of things have got to go. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because... And I believe that that is a key word in that verse. You've got to understand today that God just didn't fill you with the Holy Spirit so you could just become a member of the Pentecostal church. He filled you with the Holy Spirit because God has anointed you to do the things that Jesus did. Amen. Let's just have a little read of what, what Jesus, what the, these words. And Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. I'm going to tell you, sometimes you've got to stand boldly right before the very enemy's face. And you've got to say, you've got to just speak words that will slice through his face, that will slice through his attitude, that will slice through and push him back from you. Amen. Don't entertain him. Don't, don't agree with him. Don't come into agreement with the devil. And I believe that Jesus here was, was directing every word that he was speaking, not only at the people that were listening to him, but into the realm of the Spirit. Friend, I want to tell you, your words are so powerful as you speak them in faith in the realm of the Spirit, because around us, we are surrounded. You've got to speak out into the realm of the Spirit that will drive back the enemy, that will drive back every negative force, because he comes to attack, he comes to destroy, he comes to kill he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And He closed the book and He gave it back to the attendants. And it says there in verse 21, and He began to say to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. It's not saying it's going to happen in another 2,000 years but he said today it is fulfilled hallelujah I have come because God has anointed me he's come that I will set the captive free he's come that I will set at liberty though all those who have been bound and bruised and all those that have been afflicted he didn't come with a with just for fun he came with a purpose and with a plan because God sent him and friend I want to tell you we can't play tiddlywinks in church I want to tell you we've got to realize that we are on this planet because God has anointed us to go out and preach the gospel. And we're gonna, that's what we're going to do on Sunday night. We're going to have a go. Amen. We're, I pray that I can get a team of people that will come and support us. I pray that there'll be a bunch of you that'll come along and be part of it and believe God in Jesus' name. Amen. God has anointed me. What an amazing thing. In Acts 1, 4, 8, this is why Jesus told the disciples to wait for the promise don't go anywhere till you have been endured with power from on high. See, I, I think that the Holy Spirit and His power has been sold short. We, we'd have need a fresh revelation. Acts 2, 1, I thank God that we don't have to wait for some event in the distant future. 
Acts, let's have a look at the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. How many people like the Bible? <laughs> when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them divided tongues as of fire and it sat on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. I want to tell you the day of Pentecost has fully come. The day, here they are, there's a bunch of people in an upper room waiting, 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 tarrying. Jesus said, don't go anywhere until you've been endured with power from on high. Then Jesus, here they are, they're all there in one accord. And all of a sudden there was a sound like a mighty rushing wind. Oh, my brothers and sisters, what an awesome thing that is. What an awesome day that is. But that day is still happening in Jesus' name. That day has not just finished and diminished. It is totally happening right now. People are being baptized in the Holy Spirit and the power of God's coming upon them. There was a man uh, that was sitting in that meeting there as, as the Holy Ghost came in like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the whole place. There was tongues of fire sat on each of them. What an amazing event. But this one man got so full of the Holy Ghost, uh, full of the power of God, he couldn't sit there any longer. A little bit like Chen when he was singing the other night. He was getting so full of the Holy Ghost, he couldn't stay in his body any longer. He wanted to get out. Hallelujah. <laughs> I feel it coming on now. <laughs> I want to tell you, here he is. He stands up in the midst and, and he starts to declare as the anointing comes upon us. Friend, we need the anointing. Lift up your hand and say, God, I need a double portion of the Holy Ghost and anointing. I need the anointing of God, a fresh outpouring God. Pour it out again on us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, this man got, got the double dose of the ghost and he stood up and he said, hey, you bunch of vipers, you've just crucified the Christ. These are not men. These are not drunk as you suppose. But these people are, is what the prophet Joel spoke about. Friend, I want to tell you, there's some stuff there that Joel spoke about. There's some stuff there that the other, disciples, other prophets spoke about that's going to happen. But I want to tell you, it's going to happen. And I thank God that we'll be in a position one day when a great outpouring of the Spirit comes and we start to see the manifestation as this great end time revival comes and people will stand and declare, this is what was spoken, the great end time revival. Hallelujah. Peter stood up and said, these are not drunk. This is what the prophet Joel said in the last days, I'm gonna pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, hallelujah. Sons and your daughters will prophesy and the old men are gonna dream dreams and glory to God, there's so much there. I don't know about you, but I want the lot. Yeah. I want a touch from the Holy Ghost. I think I've had one. Sharabundi. Luke, I don't know where I'm at now. <laughs> where am I at, John? <laughs> Let's have a look again at Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. This outpouring of the Spirit is not just for some Elect few. See, one of the things I said I love about Clark is that he releases everything that he's learned so others can follow. Others try to hold it back because it's their little gift. And they don't want others doing perhaps what they're doing. Friend, you might have been conned that this is just for somebody that's been through seminaries. I've seen cemeteries that have got more life than some seminaries. Excuse me. Don't delete that from the tape. <laughs> it's not for some select few that have been perhaps chosen. 
It is for every believer. But if you believe that it's only for some select few, you eliminate yourself from the double portion. But if you can dare to believe God, I want to tell you, nothing is too difficult. Nothing is too hard for God. It's not just for some elect few. This experience for the power to set people free is for every be- believer who will delay. De- <laughs> Let me get my false teeth back. Who will dare to activate this anointing that's in you. Let me say it again. That will dare to activate the anointing that is in you. See, people are trying to get something that you've already got. If you're not using it, it's just laying dormant. We just got to stir up the gift that's in us, amen. You got to stir up the gift that's in you. Stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. How do you stir it up? You start believing. I rang a guy on Monday morning and he said, Neil, that was a, he came from the Gold Coast to our meeting. He said, Neil, that was a fantastic, outstanding weekend. He said, I got so stirred up. He said, I started to activate what's in me. And he said, I saw this person. And so I went over and I started to share Jesus with him. And he said, I led him to Christ. What would have happened if he hadn't stirred himself? If he would have just saw that poor old fellow there, say, oh, poor old fellow. No, no, don't just say that. Go over there and say, let's fix it up. Let's do something about it. You see somebody there that needs a, needs a healing touch? Go over and ask them if you can pray for them. Do something for goodness sake. You'd be surprised what God might open up for you. you, 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 you. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't happen straight away. Sometimes, you know what I mean? You, you think, oh man, I expected that person just to jump out of the wheelchair. Don't start with the wheelchair person. Unless God tells you, of course. (laughs) Start with, with, you know, (laughs) yeah, headache. (laughs) Start, but for goodness sake, start. Everybody say start. Start. Do something. Do something. (laughs) So here here we are, Luke Luke 6, uh, 17. And it says, And he came down with them and stood at a level place with a crowd of his disciples. And a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the uh, coast of Tyre and Sodom who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits and they were healed And it says in verse 19, and the whole multitude sought to touch him for power went out from him and healed them all. What what I'm wanting to say is, you will be amazed really what's in you. Power will go out of you. The Holy Spirit is tangible. The person of the Holy Spirit is tangible. You can feel it. You can feel Him touching your life. Anybody here ever felt the Holy Spirit touching your life? Your inner man, the inner person, just come here. Just come here. Stand. Can I just have somebody just come with me here quickly somebody strong somebody just 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 stand you see you see Jesus had said that something went out of him (laughs) and it's tangible (laughs) and you release it (laughs) you you release it (laughs) you release it (laughs) you release it (laughs) come here See, see, I'm just picking the front row here. Yeah? <laughs> You'll be glad you did. 
because see you just release it uh, uh, can you can, I'm, I'm demonstra- I'm wanting to demonstrate just shoo! <laughs> Now, I didn't have to push her. I didn't have to touch her. It is tangible. They came to Jesus because they wanted to touch him. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> you can stand up, Bill. They say that's, uh, Sheila's are easy. Yeah. You see, Bill, you, you need that touch. You need that tangible. of the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit see they if you please I, I, I want to demonstrate this so you can understand you can if you don't release it nothing changes see I, I just started to, to look into the realm of the Spirit you see we we enter into the realm of the Holy Spirit. Somebody on this side, and you've got a condition in your left elbow. Who's that? Quick. Who is it? Quick. Somebody's over here with a condition in your left elbow. It's gone from me now. Who, is, who thinks it's them? Somebody on this side of the half of Ian. <laughs> Anybody? Quick. Oh, well, I might have missed it. That's okay. Don't worry about it. It's not going to stop me, amen? You come to me later on and tell me it's you, that's fine. But what I'm saying is you release something. You enter into something. You, you, you move into something. There's still somebody here with that condition. Who's shy? Shut your eyes and lift your hand. Nobody will see you. <laughs> oh. Somebody's a bit shy over there, but I, I could be wrong. And I've been wrong before, okay? You, you're, you see, let me just say that the person of the Holy Spirit is tangible. You can feel Him touching your life. You can feel the anointing being released from your body. I, I liken it to love. When you, you release love. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Give me a wave with your left hand if you do on the side. <laughs> Your inner man can look into and you can go into the realm of the spirit. It's not mystical, it's real. The devil is the counterfeiter. Is that correct? He can't create anything. He counterfeits and brings the psychic things into it to divert from the truth. So a lot of times when people start talking this way, you know, Clark made a statement the other day that he can... Uh, sometimes understand what people are thinking. And you, you think, oh man, that's all mystical. No, no, no. It's a gift of God. It's a gift of God. People, the devil brings in the psychics to divert people from the truth. Our spirit man knows all things, the Bible says. I don't, but the spirit that lives in me does. He knows all things. It's an amazing thing. It's not mind reading, it's a gift of God. Jesus perceived what they were thinking when they forgot bread in Matthew 16, 7 and 8. Here they were, they were down there, he was telling them to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and blah, blah, blah. And and really he was telling them to beware of the doctrines and the traditions. But they were saying, it's because we've forgotten no bread. We forgot, forgot the bread. And Jesus perceived what they were saying. He said, listen, it's got nothing to do with bread. Friend, you've got to, to, the gifts of the Spirit are so powerful and so strong and so, so important that we really, really need to understand. Jesus perceived in His Spirit. Mark 2.8, also in um, Luke 5.22. Paul perceived that the crippled man was thinking what he was thinking. And here he is preaching to a bunch of people and he's perceiving that there's a man there that says in his mind, I can be healed. And so Paul grabs hold of him and says, rise up and be healed. 
And the guy immediately gets healed. He had faith to be healed. Jesus said, these things that I do, you can do also, and even greater things than this shall you do. See, what the church does, what we do is we underestimate what God can do. We underestimate what, what the, the whole anointing. And we think, I'm only an, a man. I, I'm, I'm this or I'm unlearned or I haven't been to the Bible school. I haven't been, to, haven't been over there to this one or to that one. And so in our mind, we limit God, what God can do. But God says, these things that I do, Jesus said, these things that I do, you can do also. I'd rather believe what Jesus says, wouldn't you? You've got to believe what Jesus says about you. These things that I do, you can do also. I, I believe that, that uh, you know, to deny the Holy Spirit's guidance would leave the church without power, without direction, without discernment. And that's what Satan wants. That's what the devil wants, is to be that way. He wants us to rely on logic. And on Friday night, that's what I saw, just logic. Good ideas, good ideas, but you'll never fight a spiritual battle with a good idea. We need the mighty Holy Spirit to flow through our worship, to flow through our lives, to empower us. Some think we get the fullness of the Holy Spirit when we get saved. That's not what happens at all. In Acts chapter 19, verse 1, we find the story there of Paul where he finds uh, 12 guys that have just been saved. He comes up to him. He says, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? They said, we have never even heard of such a, a, a Holy Spirit. He said, we were baptized under John with repentance. He said, no. He said, you should be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so immediately they went down and they got baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak with other tongues and they began to prophesy. But I want to tell you, it's time that we started to allow and activate the mighty Holy Spirit power in our lives and, and see the prophetic word and see the anointing and see, uh, and see you know, healings and deliverance and goodness knows what else because that's what God wants to do. You believe that? Some of you are looking at me like a cow looks at a new gate. <laughs> Goes on then and says with these bunch of people, then God worked miracles through the hands of Paul. That they, that they put uh, handkerchiefs and they took handkerchiefs from his body. You know, I don't know about you, but when you think of that, you most probably think that here is old Paul and he was in the meeting one day and he had an apron and a handkerchief hanging off him. And uh, they took that handkerchief and they took that apron. I want to tell you, friends, this phenomena wasn't a once It was a phenomena that happened for month after month. It could have even happened after years that they were taking aprons and handkerchiefs and things off Paul's body and they were sending them around to the sick and those who were oppressed of the devil, those who were demon-possessed. And those, when they put those aprons and those things on them, they were totally healed. I went to a meeting once, I, told, I think I've told this story before, where the presence of God was so strong and they were, they were actually anointing handkerchiefs and cloths and goodness knows what. There was so much oil going around, the preacher guy, they had all these cloths there and he walked all over them while he was preaching. As he, as he carried that anointing, they were so saturated with, with oil and goodness knows what else. And people were taking them home and laying them on the sick. And this one particular lady grabbed, had one of these uh, handkerchiefs things and, or whatever it was, and she said she took it home and she put it on, to, on her mantle uh, over a stove or over a fireplace or something. And she was too scared to use it. Her mother, who had had uh, a foot complaint and couldn't walk, she was bedridden, and uh, she said, I was going to put it on, give it to her mother, but fear, it mightn't work, blah, blah, blah. What will mum think if it doesn't work? She's, for two months, she said she left that thing on the mantle and after two months, she plucked up enough courage to take it to her mother. And she said to her mother, she said, Mom, she said, I went to a meeting and people were putting these things on their sick bodies and they were getting healed. Mom, would you, would you please put this around your foot and let's believe God. And she said that Mom put it around her foot and went to bed that night. And the next morning, the phone rang and it was a mother. And her mother said, when are you going to come to pick me up? She said, what do you mean? She said, come and pick me up. She said, why? She said, I want to go shopping. She said, I'm totally free. <laughs> 
See, for two months, that thing was sitting on that mantle, pulsating. Boom, 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 boom. You know that thing sitting beside you right now? <laughs> it's pulsating. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Some of us might need one of those hard things boom, to, to get it beaten again. But it's still in there, amen. I say, let's stir it up again. <laughs> Let, let's, let's get that thing moving again in us. Let, let's do some things. Friend, if, if you want to, bring handkerchiefs, bring things. We'll anoint them with oil. We'll pray over them. Bring them Tuesday night. We'll do whatever. Send them to people that are sick. Send them. And let's believe God that God will do what He says He will do. I will, if you do it, I will heal the sick. If you believe, I will do whatever you believe. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Let's do some things that will break the strongholds that are around the church and break into that supernatural power of God. Friend, I want to tell you, getting saved with a cappuccino is good enough. It's not good enough. The cappuccino might be nice, but I want to tell you, we need Holy Ghost filled, Spirit filled people. Amen. We need a double dose of the ghost again in the church. How many people want a double dose? I believe you're hungry in this house. Let's stand to our feet. Stand to our feet. I, I pray that you've caught my drift a little bit today. And that person with that left arm, um, come and see me. I tell you what, it's going up into your shoulder right now. That pain will not get better <laughs> on its own. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, stir up the gift, the Bible says. Is that what it says? Is that what it says? Stir up the gifts. It was given to you by the laying on of hands. Stir up the gifts. Stir up the gifts. Stir up the gifts. Feel that thing pulsating on the inside of you. Pulsating on the inside of you. Pulsating on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pulsating on the inside of you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the barber kept on shaving. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus. <laughs> Is it a good game you're playing, mate? I'm just going to park you again. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Come on, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands and shout. There is a double portion of the Holy Ghost that's coming upon you, my dear brother. It's a magnitude of a pouring of God. Keith, you're going to start to see a manifestation of God's power. As you travel out west amongst people, you're not just going to be speaking words, but there's going to come a demonstration of power.